Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a reading today for Virgo. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Sorry, I'm getting pulled into the message. Virgo, I'm doing your reading with a, a blend of three decks. You will see a mix of all three in your spread today. So we've got the Eight of Swords on the split. This card is a fascinating card to me. I'm not sure if it's been in a reading yet, but I look at it a lot and it's always talking to me about kind of like a mixed bag, like that there's an energy or an individual perhaps in your environment that really has like a blend of good and not so good, like great characteristics, things that you love about them and then things that are really challenging, right? It's like, it's like this, this serious mixed bag and then the five of pentacles at the bottom of the deck talking about maybe um, moving away from that, walking away from that energy. Okay, let's pull you um, an overall energy from the musical alchemy of astrology. This is a new deck that I've just gotten from the creators of the Lifruma Healing Oracle. I'm still becoming familiar with this deck. I'm still becoming familiar with the Lafruma deck, and I've been using it for quite some time. There's always something new in it, right? So overall energy from the, I can never remember the name of this deck, the Musical Alchemy of Astrology. Okay, overall energy for Virgo. Sun, beaming life force. All right. Oh, there's a card right behind it. Conjunction, merging focused intentions. Okay, so this is fascinating. I don't know a lot about astrology. This deck is going to be very challenging for me for that reason, right? Because I don't know a lot about conjunctions and all of this stuff. But merging focused intentions, musical collaboration. I want to say that you're actually represented as the sun energy here. Um, just seeing if there's anything else on the table kind of confirming that. You actually have the moon here twice, which is fascinating because it feels like maybe that's what we're talking about. Maybe there's somebody in, uh, in uh, a collaboration or a work situation perhaps with you, somebody in close proximity with you that is representative of the, represented by this moon energy and you're coming through with the sun. I want to say that also kind of indicating that you may be a leader or the guiding force in a situation, maybe not realizing that now, that could be what is, is about to um, become apparent to you as you walk away from this potentially negative influence, realizing that you are in a sense, the leader or the deciding factor in this collaboration. That's what the conjunction energy is talking to me about. The merging focused intentions. The merging focused intentions is is a situation or um, a, a, it's a situation or an energy that you're attempting to work with, but there's something here that isn't that isn't quite right. It's becoming known to you that there's something that isn't quite right. And I'm saying that because the Nine of Wands is the first card on the table here. This could be your own kind of intuition kicking up because this usually comes up as a guide. Maybe it's coming in as, as guidance for you, but I feel like this is an, your, an aspect of yourself that is stepping forward and saying, Virgo, something's not right here. Something's not right. She usually comes in with either tough love or a cautionary message. It's a message that isn't necessarily one that, that wants to be delivered or wants to be received. But like I said, I feel like it's your own self kind of beginning to realize that you're bumping up against an obstacle. And the obstacle seems to be, interestingly, this three of cups, which could be because of this energy here. There's something about, this card always talks to me about um, automation, actually. So there's something too automatic or there's somebody who maybe is, is too kind of acting on unconscious whims or desires perhaps. There could be a lot about them that they're not aware of. They're not very self-aware perhaps. It could be part of what's going on here, but it's basically saying there's something in your environment. There's something in your environment 
And it could, and it has something to do with, I want to say, with attempting to merge intentions, right? So attempting to kind of work in a group is there's a there's something that is there's something about it that is holding you up because of the moon and the hanged man coming up next, the hanged one. Um, these two cards actually, as I'm holding them up in the camera, they're they're seeming very kind of disjointed. So there's a disjointed energy. As it's blending with yours, that's the thing. There's something about your energy and their energy doesn't merge or mesh well together. Because they're too automated, I want to say, and maybe you're extremely conscious and self-aware. And so that combination doesn't mix. That's what this that's what this spiral is talking about, I believe. That attempting to combine, it's kind of like the that they're Maybe it's just because they're following your lead, actually, and you want to be in a, a group with other visionaries or other leaders. Because this card talks about um, something that happens automatically. That's why I keep saying it's automated, right? So it's like whatever it is that you do with this sun card here, with this um, being the leader, there's these follow there are these follower energies. So you have these followers. But there's something about that. The fact that they're following is bringing in this idea of them being um, automatic or not conscious enough, I think, is kind of what the message is here. And that could be the reason why the moon is here. The moon talking about kind of like the subconscious or things that are not clearly seen. And that's where this, this hang up is. This is where you're getting caught up. This is where things are getting caught up for you, right? With the Page of Swords coming up next, it's saying something about once you kind of um, pinpoint the issue, then you can begin to kind of educate yourself on it or learn or learn about it. You're learning about the fact that maybe it's just this epiphany about the fact that you're carrying all the weight here, right? With the Ten of Wands coming next, you're discovering, it's like this light bulb moment where you're discovering that you're carrying all the weight and then therefore it makes sense why there's it's not progressing as as quickly as you had hoped with this hanged one here it's like there's something holding the situation back and it could just be this epiphany that you need to kind of almost like surround yourself with other leaders or people that aren't so automated that's interesting it feels like that's not quite right though there's something and that's not quite right but it could just, okay, so it could be something like that you're working with a group of people and there's just one in the mix that is representative perhaps of what I'm describing. And if it's not quite this idea of them being automated or um, working unconsciously, it could just be that there is one in the mix that their influence is impacting you in a way that you're not perceiving. And there's this idea of maybe stepping back and examining all of the intentions of the group in order to come to some clarity. That's what this could be talking about with um, studying, with coming to a epiphany about the dynamics of the group. And then with the, the moon coming up again, right? It's kind of, well, it's interesting because it's like this three of cups and the moon combined in this card with the three figures at the bottom. And then the moon card is talking about that. It's like, it's like bringing this, it's almost like an elephant in the room in a sense, but, but something that was being overlooked, something that was being overlooked almost as if Maybe because everybody is so busy doing their thing that there wasn't really kind of a conscious examination of the dynamics of the group. Does that make sense? So it's almost like you're stepping back and taking a look at the dynamics of the group, realizing that you're kind of being forced to carry more than your fair share because somebody in the mix is too unconscious or too automated or too bringing bringing stuff into the equation that is not beneficial therefore maybe adding to the workload or 
adding to this kind of state of confusion perhaps or it's like this like what exactly is off here what exactly is holding us up here so with the ace of wands and the fool card coming next it looks to me like the epiphany that you may be having is that it's time to step away from this for a bit actually and it's just it, realizing to confirm that it came out on the on the split there that you're coming to an epiphany that it's time for you to walk away at least mo to take a break right to take a break from this because i'm seeing the three individuals here kind of examining this tr trying to figure out the mystery trying to solve the problem and then you kind of stepping out you're this one in the center here you deciding that you need to step out and move in a new direction with the fool coming next at least for a time it could be just, it could just be taking a break. It could actually be just like literally stepping out of the room in order to get fresh air, right? This is what the fool could be talking about as well. Like leaving all of that behind, which is really um, a great idea. This one is saying, yes, yes, yes. That's the guidance here. Absolutely. Step out of the room. That's what this is showing as well. Stepping out of the room, stepping out of the situation in order to recalibrate with the nine of wands coming up next. This card talks to me about recalibration. Recalibration, bringing in this idea of uh, like the nine of wands and the 10 of wands, like really almost like coming to terms with the challenge that you're facing here. Because I feel like this is challenging. This It's challenging to even step out of the room. It's interesting. I was having a conversation actually with somebody online today who was, this is fascinating, who is in um, kind of a work situation, actually in a kind of uh, like a um, working on the line in a sense or in a factory. And there was something um, amiss. There was something amiss in that environment. This is interesting that this is coming up. Like uh, the air quality was not appropriate. It was becoming unsafe for the workers in this factory, right? But this individual didn't want to leave the environment. They were resistant to walking outside and just getting fresh air for some reason. And I want to say that it could be because of the thought forms surrounding um, work ethic and being in, uh, in a group, being in a team, that you don't, you don't leave the team, right? That could be part of the contamination here, part of the, uh, what's making it difficult to have clear thought is the, the, is some sort of a contaminant, right? So, but when you walk out the door and you get fresh air, you can come to terms with that and recalibrate. And then with the strength card coming up next, it's talking about regaining your strength, realizing here in this moment that this was actually much more of a drain than you realized, or it was holding you up more than you realized, or maybe it was just uh, like a make work situation where it was, there was just much, way too much work going on because there was this need to overcompensate for whatever this is that this one is bringing into the environment, right? Somebody is bringing something into the environment that is making everything that much harder. And so you're having this epiphany. The epiphany at first could just be Something is not right here. I need to get to the bottom of this, but it feels like a challenge because of the double moon energy. It's almost like I'm describing about how it's difficult to get clear thought in this situation because of this. Like there being something in the air that is causing everybody to not quite think properly. And that could be why this is coming up here. It's almost like there's a there's a part of you, an unconscious part of you perhaps that is starting to have a red flag about there's not something, there's something not quite right about this situation or this environment. I can't, I can't see what it is exactly, but I just have this feeling. It's especially with these two cards, it's like the that there's a the like there's disorientation. There's some sort of something is disorienting here. So I need to get to the bottom of it. And in order to get to the bottom of it, I actually have to extricate myself from this situation in order to recalibrate. And that's the interesting thing with this recalibration card. It's saying that it actually has a, a, maybe actually an impact on your physical being, definitely on your thought process, right? So there's, there is a phase of recalibration before this strength, this strength comes in. The strength talks is talking to me about vision, actually. 
And it, it almost is, is saying something maybe about receiving vision or guidance. The moment you you become clear again, it's like the, when you come back out into the sun. So this is interesting. This conjunction card here, I'm just noticing it's talking about amplification of the heart, wondrous magic coming together in kinship. So that's fascinating because I feel like that was the original intention or focus here. That's why you all came together. Passion has drawn you together. But like I said, it's like there's one in the mix or there's something. It might not be an individual. There's something in this dynamic that is the culprit, right? So, and then getting out into the sunlight, getting out into fresh air is bringing this, uh, bringing clarity of heart and mind for you so that you're actually almost like receiving a new vision. Because it's like, it's almost as if you're standing out in the parking lot outside of the workspace and falling into a daydream, like a really powerful daydream. I'm looking at you as this figure here and the lion is actually almost somehow tied to this guidance energy. It's like a guide that is, because it's this whim, this kind of red flag going up for you that actually brought you outside, right? So that's the lion. It's this guide that brings you to the place where you can have this kind of epiphany or vision about what it is you need to do to kind of turn this situation to your advantage because the wheel of fortune is coming up next, right? So it's talking about that. It's talking about turning this, this situation kind of right side up. There's something though about like looking into the future or seeing some potential future kind of on the flip side of this situation with this ace of pentacles coming at the end of the reading here. It's like your eye is on this diamond which is fascinating. It's reminding me of this dream that I had. I don't know. I guess because, I mean, we're talking about this sun energy and now this diamond. It's like, okay, so it's bringing back this dream that I had. That I was looking at the sun. I was looking up at the sun and the sun had this kind of aura around it. It was mostly on one side that had almost like the this diamond fractaling energy to it it was kind of a little bit like a migraine aura but it looked like the sun had like this lacy aura around one side of it it was almost like paisley you know when when bubbles in the surface of water kind of um gather around edges right so it was like the sun was this edge and there was all this kind of bubbly lacy paisley type energy kind of clustered around one side of it and it was this amazing phenomenon anyway so it so it's kind of looking like that it's like it's like getting lost in daydream like i am right now kind of describing this dream dream that i had and getting lost in the vision of it looking at this diamond right but it has something to do with turning the situation in your favor is tied to something to do with an ace of pentacles and what this is talking to me about is kind of ties into a reading I did the other day about almost dis discovering or remembering a strength of yours with the strength card that is the solution to a situation. And with this, it being the ace of pentacles, it's almost as if you have, um, it's almost like you have the, the ability, the, maybe even the finances, the resources to put into this situation to renew it or cleanse it is what I'm getting and to kind of bring it back to the place that it was intended to be all along before things kind of got murky or clustered, cluttered up by that one. I mean, look at the Six of Pentacles is right beneath that. It's almost like you are exiting the room and going out and kind of gathering up what is needed to come back with the Emperor underneath that. And the King of Pentacles, it's, almost, it's looking to me almost as if you are wealthy. You're wealthy with the Hermit coming to, it's like you're alone in this. Okay, I know that it likely doesn't, um, it likely isn't talking about finances, maybe, but it's almost as if you have this wealth of something 
because you're coming through as the emperor, the king of pentacles. It's like you're the one, you're the benefactor, you're the humanitarian. With the hermit being that almost as if nobody knows this about you. You're the only one that knows this about you. So I'm digging too far into the... The, the others around you don't know that you have this like wealth tucked away or this ability to generate wealth, perhaps something like that. Or you have, you have some asset, some resource or tool tucked away that it's almost as if you never thought to call upon it or to utilize it until you were having this moment out in the parking lot saying like, what has gone wrong here? What has gone off here? What is missing here? What is the solution? And it's like this epiphany about, oh, maybe I should use what I have. I should use what I have and put it into this situation. Which is interesting because it is talking here about you carrying more of the weight than the others. But maybe that has something to do with you blending in. That's fascinating. So it's almost as if you stand out somehow. You have this diamond, this gem of some sort of a gem in your possession. And you are, maybe that's what all this moon energy is talking about, is that you're attempting to keep it out of you. And you're attempting to blend in. But while you're blending in, it really becomes obvious that you don't blend in that you are one of these things doesn't belong there but it's not quite like that because you do belong there because this is i want to say this is actually a great project or a great focus or a great group of people so okay that's fascinating so it's almost as if you're this reluctant leader you're reluctant to shine a light on yourself or to really highlight your strengths because you want to be part of this group you want to just be you want to just blend in and it's almost as if you are being forced to step up. You're being forced to step up and kind of show your hand about what, what you have in your back pocket in a sense, because otherwise it's, it's too difficult. Okay. So that's fascinating. It's almost, or it's almost something like, especially with this fool and the stepping out and the being recalibrated and my story about the factory and that something's off in the environment. It's almost like something, something goes awry. That's what this is talking about. It's almost like this is the contaminant in the environment that goes awry. Might not be anybody's fault, right? It's not like it's pinned on a specific individual, perhaps, but it's kind of forcing your hand to show that you have something really valuable that for some reason you're keeping you were keeping to yourself because you don't want to be a leader you don't want to be a highlighter you don't want to be seen as separate from the group for example okay so i'm going to continue to pull cards and create an extended if you're interested in that link is in the description and if not i will see you next time virgo thanks bye